Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States. Well, I have a statement here, a brief statement. First, I'm pleased that Senate Majority Leader Bob Byrd and Republican Leader Bob Dole have agreed to take up consideration of the treaty to eliminate an entire class of U.S. and Soviet intermediate-range nuclear missiles. This treaty, which was signed last December, has placed U.S.-Soviet arms discussions on a path that goes beyond arms control and toward real nuclear arms reduction. I am both hopeful and confident that after careful consideration, the Senate will agree that this treaty is a diplomatic milestone and will give its consent to United States participation. Second, the March trade figures were good news. The best news on this front since March of 1985. With the trade deficit dropping $4.1 billion and with exports up $5.4 billion, this is clear evidence that the trade balance is improving as our economy continues to grow. Now, several days ago, I received a trade bill from Congress, and my message to Congress on this matter is currently under review, and I expect to issue it within a couple of days. But today's news emphasizes what we've been saying all along, that this is not the time to be imposing restrictions on trade or reducing incentives for free open markets or closing job opportunities. We want more jobs, not less. And we want a job market open to all working men and women in this country. I'm ready to roll up my sleeves and go to work with the Congress once again in crafting a trade bill that will continue this trend of more job creation and greater economic growth. Mr. President, why have you authorized the dropping of the drug indictment against General Noriega? And doesn't that give the Democrats ammunition for the presidential campaign? Not if they'll wait until there's something to be announced. We're negotiating right now, and therefore I can't comment on negotiations that are underway. It'd be foolish to do so. Uh, there's some things you have to keep to yourself when you're arguing with someone else. But we're not, uh, as I said, those no negotiations are underway. There has been no decision made on uh, some of the things that are being discussed. And I have to say that I think that much of what many of you have been dealing with as a story is based on some kind of leaks or misinformation because there are no facts to sustain it. If I could clear up that one point, though, sir. Haven't you authorized the dropping of the indictment in return for some, something on Mr. Noriega's part? As I have to say, when you're negotiating, and I did that for 25 years as a union officer in labor management relations, you don't go out and talk about <laughs> what you're negotiating on. President, now that the conservatives, uh, Washington, personified by the Washington Times, have jumped ship on um, Attorney General Edwin Meese, and the loss of morale in the department, the loss of respect for the Justice Department in the country and its integrity, are you still backing Meese uh, uh, and have total confidence in him, or are you going to uh, ease him out? No, I have complete confidence in him. And I know because there have been a great many allegations made, but nothing has been proven, and I've seen no evidence of any wrongdoing on his part of the kind that is inferred in the allegations that are being kicked around. And right now, on this particular thing, I think you'd have to talk to him about that. I think there's more than meets the eye with regard to this, uh, this latest uh, departure. What do you mean? What? what? What are you referring to? You mean that Eastland uh, did something to undermine the Attorney General? No, he uh, he made a statement himself that there was no animus in anything that had happened. But I think that you should uh, talk to the Attorney General about well, that and what that happened. Is that the role of the press officer to be a defense attorney? Well, once again, somebody speculated that that's what was the uh, the reason there and. Uh, I think that you should talk to the Attorney General. Yeah. Mr. President, if you can't discuss the negotiations with Noriega, I'd like to ask you, however, about your policy goal. You have said in the past the goal was to see that Noriega stepped down from power. And at various times you've talked about leaving the country, and various times you haven't. Is your goal to see that not only Noriega leaves power, but that none of his cronies continue to exercise power in his name? I said I wouldn't comment, but I'll make one comment on that. 
What we're interested in seeing is a restoration of democracy in Panama. Uh, it didn't start with this particular man, but sometime back under another one, the commanding officer of the National Guard in Panama uh, suddenly began to take precedence over the president of Panama and dictate to the government. We feel it is time that democracy return to, uh, to Panama. And uh, this is what we're negotiating to it. Well, sir, if someone controls the government to uh, if Noriega pulls strings <laughs> behind the scenes, is that acceptable to you? Uh, not if we have re reinstituted democracy there in Panama. But again, I can't comment further on this. We are in the midst of real negotiations. Sir, the fear is that you're selling out. The fear is that you, that you are going to agree to a deal which has a fig leaf of uh, some restoration of democracy, but in fact leaves Noriega in power. Oh, I, I know. I've been reading that in the part and, and hearing it uh, uh, in, the, in the newscast. Well, when you, when you and comments, uh, no. I'm not going to back away from what we're trying to do. Well, sir, Mr. President, sir. Mr. President, there have been charges also that this government was aware of drug running involved with the contra supply, possibly illegal contra supply operation. Can you tell us and the congressional committees that have been investigating that there was no involvement by this government, the CIA or any other agencies of this government, in running drugs on the same airplanes that were bringing weapons to the Contras? Uh, and are you investigating, if you didn't know about it, to see whether there are any, is any truth? All that I knew about any, any of this until the indictment came down with evidently evidence enough to get to an in indictment that previously there had been some rumors. Uh, he was providing information on the situation in Central America, uh, I think to our intelligence people and the CIA. Uh, some rumors came up about possible drug, in, but no one ever received or could get any evidence to substantiate those rumors. And then this latest thing happened, and I don't know whether that was whether he just had started or whether there was anything really going on. But, sir, there are other charges that there was <coughs> other involvement by this government in drugs on the same airplanes that were mm -hmm. delivering weapons to the Contras beyond Noriega. Did you know anything about that? Is there any no, truth to that? No, the only thing I knew was when we operated a sting operation and found that the Sandinistas were shipping our, uh, our drugs. Well, and uh, unfortunately, the pilot of that plane in that, in that uh, particular skin operation was shot down in the streets of an American city shortly after the... Are you checking into the these latest allegations? Yes, we are. Mr. Mr. President, Mr. President, Mr. President, how can you, given the hard line that you took at the very beginning in the situation in Panama, saying that Noriega had to leave the country, saying once that the Dominican Republic wasn't far enough, and our uh, recognition of Mr. Del Valle as the president, how can you do anything in the way of a compromise without appearing to back down from your original policy goals? Again, you're asking me, that would lead into what, <laughs> what's being talked about, and I can only tell you that uh, we're not going to uh, uh, just whitewash anyone. Mr. President, I've got, Mr. President, uh, Mr. President, uh, I've got uh, I, I, I suggested two more, so okay. three a minute. Mr. President, you have repeatedly denied that astrology played any role in the setting of policy, but you have ducked the question as to whether or not it played a role in the setting of schedule. A number of aides besides Mr. Regan have indicated that astrology did play a role in the setting of schedule, including the timing of the signing of the INF Treaty. Why did you allow that to go on, sir? It didn't go on. And this whole thing is built around an incident in which it is, uh, it was printed that uh, this had to do with the scheduling of, an op of one of my operations. But it didn't happen that way at all. And you know something else? It didn't have anything to do with me being sworn in as governor, taking the oath of office at midnight, or one minute after midnight, uh, back when I first became, was elected governor. What I was doing that time was because once I became governor-elect, the incumbent governor, my defeated, started filling up the ranks of term appointments, in, uh, appointments and judges to the place where I would have had a government all set up for me before I got in. Well, I couldn't do much about it. He was still in office till I was signed in. I asked uh, the people who'd been in charge of my campaign, Bill Roberts, 
of when was the earliest that I could become governor? And he said, well, the minute after midnight, the night before the inaugural ceremonies. And I said, I'm going to get sworn in a minute after midnight. And I got sworn in, and at least it headed off a half a day's appointments that he wouldn't have time Sorry. because the next afternoon we... We, I was inaugurated. You're talking about a couple of specific incidents. Are you denying that either you or Mrs. Reagan, though, used astrology on any occasion during your time here at the White House to help us set the schedule for trips or the signing of the INF Treaty? I must say this goes against what a lot of aides are telling us, sir. Well, no, I'm only going to tell you that one thing, and that is that after I had been shot, which was quite a traumatic experience for my wife, Thank you. and it was not a... No, I think the... No, I was confident I was going to be all right. Uh, other people can't know that. But um, a friend, you know, she was getting a great many friend calls from friends, and a friend called and said that he wished that he'd known uh, what I was going to do that day and so forth because of, uh, he mentioned someone, that all the signs were bad and everything else. And uh, Nancy was... It was a trauma that didn't go away easily. And um, when suddenly things of the same kind, just for a short period there, when, when I was booked for something of the same kind where the accident occurred, why, she would ask, what does it look like now? And no changes were ever made on the basis of whether I did or did not why, conduct this. Why something like the signing of an INF treaty, treaty, sir? What? Why something like the No, sign it wasn't. Nothing, nothing of that kind was going on. Uh, this was all, once again, smoke and mirrors. And uh, we made no decisions on it, and we're not uh, binding our lives to this. And um, I don't mean to offend anyone who does be believe in it or who engages in you it seriously. In it? What? Do you believe in it? I don't guide my life by it, but I won't answer the question the other way because I don't know enough about it to say, uh, is there something to it or not? Do you think your, your, uh, the attempt on your life could have been prevented? No, this friend thought that had, had I been told of, that, how, that that was supposed to be a horrendous time for me, that I might have done something well. We didn't. Mr. President, uh, uh, you have often spoke of your belief in the integrity and honesty of, of your Attorney General. Uh, I'd like to ask you another question, which is, don't, don't you think that all of these resignations and the difficulty of filling the job and the attacks from so many directions are, are even if uh, he is a man of integrity and ability, don't, don't you think this is, this is getting in the way of the Justice Department doing doing its job, and isn't that a reason for him to, to, to step aside uh, 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 on those grounds? No, because I think that there's been a wave, and for quite a long time, and not just with him, but with others, in which accusation or allegation is taken to mean conviction. And there's been too much of that. In this land of ours, you are innocent until you are proven guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. And nothing has been proven these allegations are continue to be made this has been true of others this was true of ray donovan and he's his poignant line i think fit the situation when he was declared totally innocent of, of any wrongdoing at all he said where do i go to get back my reputation this also applies to Beggs, who finally stood up and resigned from nasa and because of things he was supposed to have done before he came into government and was found innocent of every, there wasn't well, are you saying, an sir, iota of any kind of uh, support for any of the accusations. Are you saying uh, then, sir, that unless uh, uh, Mr. Meese would be indicted, that he should remain remain in, in, in office? Uh, or can there be a lesser allegations that don't require an indictment that, that would be grounds for him stepping aside? I think that for him to step aside would be what he himself once said, that he would then live for the rest of his life under this cloud uh, that, uh, with nothing that had ever been proven. Thank you, sir. Uh, what about the McKay report? You had recognized her, and you, all right, so Thank you're the last one. Thank you, sir. One more about uh, Noriega. The combination of sanctions and um, 
the combination of sanctions and negotiations have been going on for an awfully long time, and it seems as if the United States looks progressively weaker. Um, aren't you a little angry that Noriega has managed to humiliate and embarrass the United States? Well, we had hoped that we could maybe make it possible for the people of Panama themselves to exert some pressure and do something. And uh, I guess having run, run into their own armed troop, troops willing to shoot uh, and shooting uh, kind of uh, cooled that down. So we're continuing to negotiate. But, but and sir, our goal remains the same. But, sir, are you not angry about the fact that the United States has been looking so weak when it's gone up against this man? Um, whether I'm angry or not doesn't count. On the situation in Panama, I will, I will not comment on the negotiations that are going on in Panama. And at the appropriate time, I expect to have a full statement and make it to the American people. Will that be soon? <laughs> I wish Thank I knew. You all. Mr. President, how <laughs> badly have you been hurt by Do you have a Mr. message President? for Don Regan? Some people are Do you have anything Mr. you want to say to Don Regan? That, uh, if the trade bill uh, were to over, your veto were to be overridden by Congress, the effect of the trade bill would be similar to Smoot Hawley. Why is it that the administration now is basically saying that it's only the plant closings provision that's wrong with the trade bill, that otherwise you would support it? Don't be nervous. Well, that is the main one, the main thing. There are other things in there that I, I don't think are helpful or belong there. There's been a habit of adding pork items to almost everything that's up on the hill, and uh, that's true there. But this is the main one. And when all of my colleagues at the economic summit from the other countries, the heads of state of the countries with which we trade, when they call what we have seen here in the last five five and a half years called the American miracle and when I have talked to them and they've asked me for questions about what are some of the things that we had done uh, I found out in answering their questions that they themselves deplore the fact that in their countries the rules and regulations imposed on government including things like this and rules about hiring and firing are part of what they say is holding them back and keeping them from having the kind of economic recovery we're ready for Sir, has Mr. Regan President, how bad Has Regan hurt your reputation? Has Regan damaged your reputation, Mr. President? Well, I was worried about you. Anything you want to say to him? Oh.